Boom. Welcome, guys. Thank you for joining us tonight. This is the College Football Experience. My name's Will. I got my guest Cody here. You guys know we're Gators. We appreciate you joining us tonight. Uh, please like, subscribe, follow us. Um, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube. Uh, you can go. You can find us on any of your podcasts. Uh, Apple, Spotify. Uh, please do not hesitate to go and share our videos, please. Cody, I guess everybody knows why we're here. Do you have anything to say in the intro? No, nah, man. I'm ready to talk some Gator football. Me too, man. Let's cue the intro and let's get started. Hit it. Hey, guys. What's up? This is the College Football Experience. We are here. Boom. Welcome, guys. I hope you all enjoyed that intro. I worked very hard on it. Uh, it took me about uh, 30 minutes to work on that thing. Mm. Uh, I was sending video clips to Cody and Gus for about two and a half hours of different things I was coming up with, man. What you I think like about it, it? I think you did pretty good. I did, too. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I texted you about it, and you were like, yeah, I just made mine on, cam on uh, Canva, <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah, oh, dang, you can do that? Yeah. So dude. then I got on there, man. I looked up YouTube intros or whatever, and then I just went to the free ones, and I just started going from there. It was, it was yeah, pretty fun, I mean, though. I it, it looks going complicated, but my thing is I'm just not as creative as you, so I think it I think it turned out pretty good. Well, see, I got to have a good uh, design already made, and then I just implement my stuff in there. It's not like yeah. I'm creating it from scratch. Yeah, I'm kind of that. But we are here to talk about – our Gators. We love the Gators. We both got our polos on. I got my hat on. Y'all see Cody in the background. He's got his Gator stuff. I'm, he hasn't gave me one of those Pepsi bottles yet. Dude, All I'm right, giving it to you tomorrow. Sure. I was going to tell you, too. Oh. I got some okay. got papers. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hook you up. <laughs> but uh, we appreciate you guys joining us, man. We want to talk about this brutal schedule. Um, I mean, gosh, it's a gauntlet. Uh, but before we do get started, um, I do want to kind of go over some things about uh, this season. Um, of course, on FanDuel, we are win totals at five and a half. Our championship SEC championship odds are a plus 12,000. National championship odds are a plus 30,000. Uh, no fault of that. I don't blame them whatsoever. You look at this schedule. It's, I, it's hard for me to see a path to the SEC championship game. Hmm. Uh, just a gauntlet. And we'll go through that here in just a second. I mean, Cody, what, what do you think about, you know, the to win total, championship odds? I mean, you think those are about right? You think a little too too low, yeah, too high? I mean, what do you think? I mean, when you look at the last couple of years, man, it's – I think it's easy to say it's not been up to par for Gator fans in general. Uh, but specifically for the brand that, that we all represent, um, last couple of years has been, you know, tough. We've had multiple, you know – Coaching changes, we've had, you know, now teams enter the SEC and it, it's just everything with the NIL and, you know, the way the recruits are going and it's just one thing after another. So I don't take any kind of, uh, you know, I don't take that to heart by no means, um, especially like you mentioned, the, the schedule for sure, dude. It's it's going to be brutal, but, you know, no excuses. I don't think Billy's going into, you know, this year thinking, well, we're already, you know, hanging up, but it, it's definitely going to be, it's going to be a very, very tight squeeze there. I think if people watch this, they will be Gator fans. I think me and you can break it down and we can show them a path where we can be successful Yeah, because we are a better team. And we can maybe – maybe if, if you deep dive in these rosters, maybe it's not as bad as you think, especially the first half of the year. Oh, yeah. Um, but we do have potentially seven to eight preseason ranked opponents. I mean, I know preseason rankings don't really matter, but still, that's probably the most I've ever mm -hmm. seen on a schedule. And then we play 11 power four opponents, okay? So you got Miami, UCF, and FSU as our power uh, four non-con. And then we got our SEC, and then you got Sanford mixed in there. So 
it, it is a lot of hard. We don't have the cupcake games. I mean, if we did all these years, Billy's record would be way better if he had three or four cupcake games. You know, he'd have eight to nine wins every year. But we've had a hard schedule every year he's been here. Uh, this is no different. This is definitely the hardest. So let's go ahead and uh, let's jump into it, man. Uh, let's kind of look at these first four games. Um, you know, we got Miami week one. I love us playing them. I'm glad that this is back. I think this needs to be something we do every five years. I don't think it needs to be something we do every year. Mm -hmm. Then you got Stanford, Texas A&M, Mississippi State. Tell me about these games. What, what's what, what? Which one of these games kind of catches your eye? And uh, kind of how do you how do you see what do the Gators need to do in the first four games? Yeah, so for me, um, the first four, obviously, you know, you talked about Miami, how we haven't we haven't played them um, in a couple of years, and then, dude, the one the one per se cupcake game we got, we we were in a freaking barn burner with last time, and and they hung fifty on us. So uh, Sanford's, I'm hoping they 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 want some get back there. You talk about A and M, new coach, uh, but one of the more talented rosters in the country. Uh, and then we got to go to Mississippi State, and you know they hate us for for the cowbells and all that ring around Mullen. Um, you know we'll be at that game for Miami. I'm stoked for that one. I think it's um, you know it's an interesting game, man. You think about how uh, both programs, you know, are used to be an elite. Both programs are in the same state. They hate each other. Um, they're starting the year off against each other. But then you you look even further, and it's like both staffs are fighting for their jobs, man. I mean, like, let's be realistic. So no matter how that game goes, if Miami wins, you know, Florida fans are going to freak out and say, you know, Crystal Ball beat us and, you know, it's a lesser team. And if Florida wins, the, the Miami fans are going to do the same. You know, Crystal Ball's not it. You know, how do you lose to Billy Napier and blah, blah, blah. So I think that one's interesting for sure. Um, it's going to be a good test to see where the Gators are game one. You know, they, they hold that streak uh, for consecutive wins at, at, at the first start um, in the country. So I'm hoping, you know, we can hold that down. And, you know, with Sanford, man, that's a game that you kind of, you know, take what you learned against Miami, hopefully against a win, and, and try to figure out how to get better with that. Uh, A&M's going to be tough, man. Even though we've got them at home, um, even though they've got a new coaching staff, the roster's still loaded, man, and I think it's going to be a tough one. Um, and then Mississippi State, I think, you know, year one, it's going to be tough for them to really match up, uh, per se, against us. But I'm hoping at least 3-1 there, man, because if we if we go 2-2 two and two in that stretch, it's going, to be, it's going to be a long year. Yeah, so the Miami game – um, I felt really good about it until they picked up Cam Ward. Yeah. Um, he he's a difference maker, even yeah. though he's kind of a turnover machine. He's still he's still a gunslinger. He's still he's probably the best player on their team now. Yeah, uh, they've kind of built that offensive line. They're better up front. Um, I would say skill wise, we might have better skill players than them. Um, I think defensive line, we might have a better defensive line than them. Uh, I think our crowd's going to make a difference. I think the 330 sure. start's going to make a difference. Mm. Um, it's going to be so freaking hot. I mean, <laughs> like pe people have said, it, the middle of Florida, the temperature's different than the than the coast. Yeah, it's hot in Miami, but it's not. There's no breeze from the ocean in Gainesville. True. So I think that will play a factor. Sanford got blow them out. Got to blow them out. Make me feel comfortable. I know they kind of come in there late 2021. We played a tough game against them. I think that team gave up. Emory Jones had an unbelievable game. This is a different Gators team, different Sanford team. A&M, we got to take advantage of them. New coaching staff, they're coming to us. Again, another 330 game. I think you need to get out of this 4-0. I think you need to go to Mississippi State, take care of business. We got to play on the road, and we got to take care of opponents that we are better than on the road. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's something we've struggled with for the last two years. We just struggled on the road. And we, we got to come out Mississippi State, 
We got to punch them in the mouth early. If we let them stay in the game, the Cowbells will get to us, hmm. and we will be in a ball game in the fourth quarter. Um, I think you got to come out 4-0. and 3-1 and one is the – the minimum. You cannot go two and two in this because it will be a long year for sure. Oh yeah. Um, what What do you see the Gators going in this stretch? If you called it right now, what, what do you see it? I'm gonna say three and one, man. I think because you know, just looking at the, I know we're talking first four, but just looking at the the schedule in general, if you look at these first four, you're gonna see we're not gonna be favored against Miami, and if it is, it's a coin flip. We'll be favored against Sanford. We're not going to be favored against AM. And it, you know, depending where Mississippi State is at by then, we could not be favored there because it's on the road. Um, and much like this entire uh schedule in general, man, we're not going to be favored. So it's like, you know, if you th- think about what we're bringing to the table and what we feel like we're bringing to the table, it could be two different things. So I'm going to say three and one. I'm hoping, you know, the one is a close game. That's the biggest thing is it is. If you lose to that A and M, or if you lose to Miami, what's it look like? And I'm worried about that Mississippi State game being a uh, noon Eastern, so it'll be eleven at eleven a.m. Central. Yeah, that worries me a lot. Uh, that early game, we struggle with those noon games. I think so too. Um, it's just you know, it's just one of those things. I, I think coaching doesn't have as much to say about it. You know what I mean? Like, it feels like the kids just can't get up for those type of games. It's hard to, to wake up that early and, and want to go beat Mississippi State, I feel like. But um, I think the roster's really improved, man. And I think realistically there is a shot at 4-0. But, but when you break things down, it it really just depends, man. Because that A&M game could really be sneaky. Yeah. So, all right. So, you think 3-1. and one, I think we're going to go 4-0. We go into a bye week after those four games, which is good. Mm-hmm. And then we got UCF at home. We go to Tennessee, and then we have Kentucky, and then we go down to Jacksonville for Georgia. Um, UCF is such a weird game to have it October the 5th. Yeah. Coming out of a bye week, uh, they picked up that transfer from Arkansas. Uh, mm-hmm. What's his name? Big quarterback. KJ Jefferson? Yes, KJ Jefferson. Uh obviously Tennessee has a new quarterback in Nico. Kentucky has a new quarterback. And then obviously Georgia, uh, probably the favorites to win the SEC, probably the favorites to win the national championship. Hmm. So it's I'm glad we're finally playing UCF. I wish it wasn't this year when we played Miami. I wish we would alternate Miami UCF. Yeah. Uh that would be nice, not get both of them in the same year. But it is what it is. I think we need some revenge right here. Uh, we played them in a bowl game at the end of Dan Mullen's era. They embarrassed us. I hated it. Uh, but we go to Knoxville. That game is crazy. Billy Napier's family's from Tennessee originally mm. before moving to North Georgia. He loves playing at Knoxville. And then you got Kentucky at home, man. We're on a three-game losing t- streak to Kentucky. Then we go to Jacksonville. And that's where the gauntlet starts. So, what are your thoughts on these four teams? Um, I think they're all winnable. Not well, not the Georgia game. I'm gonna say the Georgia game is not winnable. I think three out of the four are winnable. We just got to have the ball go our way in some of these games. Yeah, you know, I, I like that you you hit on that UCF Miami because I think that's a great idea to to flip them. Um, you know, every other every other year or so. Um, that's going to be a tough one, but I, I like the way we match up against UCF, not necessarily personnel-wise, but like, um, you know, game plan-wise. I think they play a really uh, similar game style. You know, Gus is big on the run. Billy's big on the run. I think, you know, talent will match up fine. So, I think that's a winnable game. I also think it it depends on where that Mississippi State game lands as far as, you know, if, if you somehow play way better than than you expect and go into that bye, I think you you build confidence against that UCF game. But if for some reason, you know, you mentioned the early start and we struggle and you go into that bye week thinking, oh, well, we, we got we, – we can't 
you know, let the wheels fall off here, then it, it could build some pressure, especially with a, you know, you mentioned KJ Jefferson and, and, you know, what he brings to the table just by himself. Um, and then you, you add in experience. It could be, it could be dangerous. So I like the matchup against UCF. I, I think we can't, we could truly beat them. Tennessee is, it's going to be hectic, man. I, I, that's a team that hates us. We hate them. You know, you got history there. You're going to their house. They're pissed because they lost, you know, in the swamp. And, and some would say they shouldn't, you know, looking at the rosters. Um, going to be a tough one. And then Kentucky, man, like the team that we talk about, me and you talk about all the time is like why they're, they're the monkey on our back recently. And they, and in the Billy Napier area, this is a team that's really gave us some struggle. Um, I do think that we're better than Kentucky. Uh, I think, um, you know, the last couple of years have shown that we haven't been prepared for Kentucky. So I do hope that that by that time you kind of know what you got. Um, and I can't even say I'm glad we got him at home because we lost him at home. But um, I do think that's a winnable game. And then you you hit on Georgia, dude. That's is is much of a punch in the gut as it is to say that's not winnable. We all know that that's probably the most, you know, talented team Dude, in the country. We would have to play the best game and they would have to play the worst game. Yeah. Like, and I don't, they would have maybe, to have some crazy turnovers. We would have to win special teams. I'm thinking like, this game's going to get really, really hairy, man. Not, not, sc- not score wise, just because like all the stuff with Rashada, I think. You know, if Kirby gets a chance to put him in, I think that's going to happen. And then, you know, you may see some tempers fly or something. That game could be, could be kind of like the Tennessee game last year, where where guys are wanting to to swing on each other. Not not saying it will happen, just saying that it, if something like that plays out, it could it could be weird. So I'm thinking think we got. I don't think we got those type of guys that want to do that. They, I know they're going to want to go out there and play hard for their coach, and they're going to want to. Oh, for sure. I just think, yeah, I just think that's, that's one team then that is going to both of, both of those teams can get under the other skin easily. And we know how the cocktail party is, you know, it doesn't matter how good or bad one team is. Typically it's kind of shaky in the first half or so. So it it really just depends, but I'm thinking we go two and two in that. I'm, I mean, obviously you hope for better, um, but you look at Georgia being arguably the best team in the, in the SEC, and you look at Tennessee not far behind. Um, you go to Tennessee, and then the neutral versus Georgia is going to be going to be tough to win. Yeah, I, I see more realistically two and two, three and one would be incredible. Yeah. I mean, absolutely incredible, man. When I when I look at these first, let me see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven games. I really only see one team where I'm like. I think they're a little better than us, but not by much. And that's Tennessee. Yeah. Um, that's we got to think with it with a young quarterback. I mean, he he's talented, really talented, and he see, could be that. He could be I, that dude. But I would flip Tennessee and Texas A and M in a heartbeat if I could, just because yeah. I love playing them early. Oh, yeah. we always have, and I feel like that's been an advantage to us. Well, it could be a, an advantage for us for A and M too. So. You know, yeah, you, you I know could, it could be that you're very well correct. Yeah, I mean, new new coaching staff. Hopefully, we can we can sneak them. I think you got to go six and one, five and two in the in the first seven. I mean, we were five and two last year. At this point, going into yeah. the Georgia bye week, I don't uh, know, man. I, I think it really depends on one. It's going to depend on Graham Mertz. Because, you know, you look at how well he's played, how he's outperformed a lot of the, you know, naysayers and, and people that doubted him and the people that saw him at Wisconsin. Um, but, you know, when when he went down against Missouri, it, it was a different team. And I know we got DJ now, and I know people are going to be screaming his name. But I feel good about the depth at most positions. I feel good at the depth of at the quarterback position, but if, if you get a guy like him that's experienced and that really knows Billy and how he wants to perform things, if he goes down, you could really struggle. And hopefully that's really? not true. I mean, hopefully it doesn't happen. But uh, the gauntlet of this schedule, you just got to wonder, like, 
can these guys keep up with the grind? Because even though Stay we may be helpful. better, you know what I'm saying? Like, even though if we're better than yeah. Kentucky by roster, that's a long way away. So, you, know, you know. don't know what you're going to have by then. Stay healthy, man. I think yeah. that's something we haven't done the last two years either. We haven't stayed healthy. Yeah. Like, the last two years, we'd get in that last four or five games, dude, we'd be so banged up. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, a lot of college football teams are. Yeah. But – I felt like we just hadn't had the depth to keep up with the injuries we would have on the offensive yeah. line at the wide receiver position, at the DB position, yeah, and the linebacker position. It just hurt us. Yeah. And I think we've changed the strength program in the offseason. It is – we train, we changed the nutrition program in the offseason. So, and I think those two things will be key of us being successful this year and can we stay healthy. Can we rotate defensive line? Can we rotate offensive line this year? Yeah. Um, that, that'll that be big for us. Well, so – Definitely going to be big in these next four. <laughs> so, we talked about the first four. You said three and one. I said four and oh. I think we both kind of agree two and two. I think that at Tennessee game is where we're both kind of – dang, we'd love to win it, but we're just not sure if we can go to Knoxville and win. We yeah. both just think Georgia's – we're just going to lose. UCF, yeah. Kentucky, we're better than them. Uh, Kentucky's like a monkey on our back. UCF being a rival game, game might be closer. Both those games might be closer than we'd like, but we might come out with a W. Uh, these last four, this is where we're going to figure out the men among the boys on our roster. Uh, I've never seen a schedule that ended like this. Um, at Texas – LSU at home, Ole Miss at home, at Florida State. Uh, the Texas game is going to be weird. Going to play them as a conference opponent. They're going to be really good. They're recruiting at a high level. Uh, Quinn Ewers coming back. They were a playoff team last year. That one's going to be tough. LSU, they, they got to replace some pieces. Quarterback, but their best wideouts. They did not improve defensively, at least just from my eyes, just when I look at their roster and what they brought in. I mean, when the head coach is on podcast saying they didn't they didn't get the defensive line they wanted, I don't know if he's BSing us or what, but uh, that makes me feel optimistic about that. Ole Miss, I don't know what we're going to get with Lane Kiffin that late. They got a good roster, good quarterback. They had a heck of a – they're doing the portal stuff. They're kind of like uh, – they went got a lot of the best players off teams, especially Texas A&M and a few other spots. So that's going to be interesting. And then Florida State at the end. We're going to Tallahassee. I don't think their stadium renovations are going to be done by then. So that's, going, that's not going to be a full capacity crowd. It's going to be weird. It's going to be like playing in 60% of the stadium, something like that. Mm -hmm. So, I I don't know. <laughs> uh, two and two, one and three. <laughs> I mean, those are the two I'm seeing. Uh, yeah. I think the Florida State one is a win. I think you can beat them. God, we've come close to beating them the last two years. Mm -hmm. uh, they They lost a bunch on defense. I think we can beat them. And then I think LSU is a more winnable game than the other three. I know that sounds crazy, but yeah, they just lost so much. And I just don't know defensively have they improved enough. Yeah. For me, man, I think, you know, you hit on at Texas. Now, granted, we don't really know. I mean, we, we assume Texas is going to be really good. I, I don't think there's, you know, many doubting that that's not true. Um, but I, I do think we get caught up in how teams play the, the prior year. And when I say we, I just mean like uh, like yeah, yeah, yeah. everybody just kind of gets used to, well, Texas was so good last year. They're going to be the, great this year. I do. They recruit so well, man, they're going to be good. I'm not saying they're not going to be good. I just think, you know, maybe, maybe you go there and, and have a good hard nosed game. Even if you lose, you, you kind of see what you got against some guys. Cause Dude. you know, they lost them. I mean, they lost a lot of guys. If to the it's pro. like, if it's like the Missouri game last year, dude, I'd be so happy. Well, that's what I'm saying is like, I mean, you, you know, just... you, you look at some of these games and you don't think things like that could happen, but 
you know, that Missouri game is a perfect example. You, you play a top 10 team on the road and nobody would have gave us a shot, especially even before the game, nobody gives you a shot. And if Mertz don't go down, arguably, you know, you could win that game. Uh, so yeah. obviously that's going to be, be a stinger. And especially because it's after Georgia, I don't see them winning that game. I think those two games are obviously the, the two biggest that would be hard to, hard to jump on. Um, LSU, you talked about what they lost. Um, that team always scares me just because of the talent they recruit. Uh, you got Brian Kelly, and and I think he's a great coach. I think um, he knows what he's doing. I know. I think he knows what he you know how to so, how to get the most out of him. How I look at LSU is, you know how Tennessee just has a hard time beating us, regardless. Yeah, it's like that for us, for them. Like no, regardless, we have a hard time beating LSU. Yeah, and I think uh, – I don't know, man. All this stuff with Napier as far as, like, you know, coaching in Louisiana and, and knowing them kids. And I think, personally, he takes that game differently, you know, just because that head coaching job came open. And, you know, it's like nobody said his name, even though he's right down the road. So, I don't know if that's how he feels. It just seems that way. Like, he just wants to beat that team, man. You know, we were at the LSU game last year, and it felt like – Obviously, the team didn't give up, but it was like Billy was doing whatever he could. Like, he wants to beat that team bad, and I don't think it's just because of a rivalry. I think it's something deeper than that. So I hope we find a way to get that game. Um, they are a little bit younger, so um, you never know. It just kind of depends on where we're at, realistically, man. I, I think it if you go in there off of two losses and think, oh, well, now we got to play LSU, yeah, they're going to they're gonna scrub you because the, the talent level is just – it's just as good, if not better, than what you got. Um, but if you go in there with a, with a tough mindset of let's play our game and and make them beat us, then you know you never know. It, it's it, it's going to be one of those that like you got them at home. So let's see what the crowd can do. Let's see you know all the things that factor in. Ole Miss, another question mark, man. You know everybody expects them to be top three in the SEC. Um, all the pieces that they brought in, you hit on the portal. Feels like they don't have a scholarship limit. They just keep bringing dudes in. Um, but it, it really feels like a make or break year for Lane. Not necessarily from us, but from his perspective, it looks like he's just like going all in. Like he knows, hey, we could be at the peak right now. And yeah, that's I think. I mean, that's th something scary. Be, yeah, this. I think he's probably like you know this all this talent I have right here. This and they're all about to leave. Yeah. Let me go all in. My chips are all on the table. Let's go win a yeah. national championship this year. 12 team well, playoff. We, sh we should make it. Yeah. That. And, you know, you look at how many times his name swirls around with jobs and, you know, with the Bama job coming open last year, whether they talked to him or didn't talk to him. I think he knows, you know, what he's shown the last few years at Ole Miss is only increasing. And if you go and get all them guys and it, and you crap the bed, and it's going to be a, a big deal. So you get them late. I think I think it's winnable, man. I, I, I think because it, it's bad to say that stereotypically he doesn't have a good defense, that you can always, you know, at least compete with Lane, whether he's got – it doesn't matter the D.C. You can bring a new D.C. in. You can bring Bama's D.C. in. You can bring whoever in. It just seems like – He's he's so good offensively that he's one of those, maybe not as bad as Lincoln Riley, where he just doesn't care about the defense. But it, he's just one of those that maybe outruns his defense, if that makes sense. Kind of tires his own team down because he scores so fast, or you know things you remember, like that. Obviously, we had AR fifteen, but you remember the Tennessee game, Billy's first year, mm -hmm. where it was really it was high scoring. Forward. Both defenses yeah. literally couldn't stop a soul. Yeah, that's what I kind of feel like that could be like. It definitely um, could. And I think our defense is going to be better, though, than last year. So, can we get those stops? Can we get to the quarterback? Yeah. I mean, my biggest thing with the second year is like finally. we started really strong last year and then it, it, we just kind of fell off. Now, granted, the schedule got harder, obviously, last year at, towards the end, but, you know, the defense felt like it, it kind of fell short the last five or so games. And I'm hoping that Armstrong is able to, you know, really learn through this schedule now of, you know, 
not just what works and doesn't work, but just kind of how, how to maintain that and, and keep everybody motivated and, and use what you got. And because Billy and staff have been recruiting really well, you know, you, you talk about those corners and safeties coming in and, you know, linebackers are, are finally there. We lose some on the defensive line, but we also keep some like Cam. I think, you know, defense can be can be strong. It's just a matter of can we stay motivated through this tough schedule? That, that's what it's going to come down to. It's not going to be a, a talent. It's not going to be a, you know, well, we got 49 guys hurt. It's going to be do you want to put your helmet on for the guy next to you? And if, if you do, then, you know, we could have a good year. Because I, I think, you know, you mentioned the, the five and a half wins, dude. Maybe it's just because we're fans and we think there's no way, but I, you just, I look at that that team, man, and I think most people just don't realize like how how much they're improving. Good we are, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you got are. Graham Mertz, who's, you know, you bring him back, really experienced guy who did really really well. The O line got better. You you look at at Montreal, he could be one of the best backs in the country that. Nobody just talks. About, I mean, nobody says right, anything nobody, about him. Nobody talks about him. If you look at his career yardage, he's top ten in the country. Dude, he he's going to be a stud. And then you add uh, Ba and all them guys in, dude. We're going to be able to rotate them in. You know, the receivers are young, but I, look what he did. I'm just like I'm kind of like flabbergasted because you know you look at Eugene Wilson and and the the year that he had. Just, I mean, that's youth right there. So it doesn't scare me to bring some of these young guys in because Billy's going to find a way to use them if, the, if they're good enough. Um, and you match that with bringing in Badger and some of these old, these older guys, it's like you look around and, and people outside of the, uh, Florida want to joke, you know, oh, well, y'all are going to go five and seven or, you know, that's a six and six, you know, ceiling. And I'm like, realistically, man, y'all don't realize how good they are. I, I truly think they're going to be a lot better than people think. Well, we just have a lot of unproven talent that just people don't know about unless you yeah. are a Florida Gator fan, a really, a really big fan. Like you go in depth in the rosters and maybe you're like an insider. Yeah. Because um, obviously we got some wide receivers that need to step up this year. We got some guys that people don't know about. Some transfers we got in. We got some speed. Uh, we got some size with the guy from Arizona State. So we're just going to have guys step up. Um, One thing's for sure: last game. Billy likes some speed at the, at the wide receivers. Yeah, he I mean, has he's got a, guys uh, that can fly. Yeah, he has a um, a type. I yeah. would say um, he he wants the big guy on the outside. We tried. I mean, which I can't imagine what they offered Jeremiah Smith. Um, oh yeah, dude, that would have been. I mean, they try. I don't blame him for leaving, but if you could, if you could just imagine having him on one side, golly, man, Eugene. I mean, he him? he would be your difference maker With for sure. Trey Wilson, he would take literally the pressure off Trey in the middle because then you've yeah. got this freak on the outside. But it is what it is. So we went in the portal and got some guys. But um, let's talk about that last game, that FSU game, going to Tallahassee. Um, for me, man, what are your thoughts? I don't know. I, I don't want to be a hater. I was high on them last year, so at least I can say that. I, I, you know, I was right about them being being good last year. I just don't have that same feeling this year. I think they lost so much to the draft, man. And you know, Mike Norvell does a great job. I think he he's a really good coach. I think he you know does really well playing the portal and getting that the talent that he needs. You know, he brings in a good quarterback, he, he's got talent. All the, the roster's got talent, and you're playing at home. That game just doesn't scare me like it, it has previous. And I don't know if it's because we've played them close the last few years. I don't know if it's because I'm just a hater and, and don't see them as that. But I just don't – that game doesn't scare me like like the Texas, like the Georgia. Like Honestly, I'm more scared of A&M than I am Florida State. So, I if I take that last four, even as brutal as it is, I think realistically you do go one and three. But two and two is not out of it. Um, 
I don't care what Vegas says in, in five, they find a way to get six. And I think Florida State could be one of those six. Yeah, I think so too. Look, FSU doesn't scare me either. Um, I think the recruits are figuring them out as well. Uh, they're figuring out why would I go there if they're just going to go in the portal and get somebody to play over me. Yeah. So uh, they, they're their defense, dude. They lost a ton on defense. I mean, they lost dude, a ton they lost, in general, man. I mean, they had one I of the thought, most top number drafted kids well, in, in the country. We saw what losing their quarterback did to the team. Just the quarterback. Yeah. Their last three games. And then you lose your two top wide receivers to the draft. And then you lose eight of your starters to the draft. So, yeah. Dude, I just we've think we've been close. To replace, man. You know, Here's, you look around Florida and we were young and now we're bringing a lot back. Dude. We had the most freshman play last year out of anybody. Here's the keys to this season. We've had some bad luck, man. We've yeah. had balls just not bounce our way. We just have had just some crazy stuff happen, especially the last two two or three games last year. The Arkansas game, we missed the field goal because people started running out there early to go kick it, and he was trying to spike it, so it was a penalty. Missouri game, fourth and 20. We didn't bat the ball down. FSU, we didn't have Graham Mertz, and we didn't execute in the red zone to knock them out at the end of the game mm. or the end of the half. Uh, we got to have stuff go our way, man, and I think it will this year. I think we'll win two games, and we're not supposed to. Um, it takes a little bit of luck, for sure. It does. I mean, you you need it a little bit. Uh, you got to make plays, but you need something to go. You need a fumble. You need a good pump return. You need just yeah. something to fire the team up. A block. Dude, I don't know kick. the last time we've seen a really good punt return. Dude, I don't. Oh, well, Ricky Pearsall had a phenomenal Arkansas game. Oh, you're right. Uh, right. It just he, feels yeah. like every time we, we, we're we catching punts, we're doing something stupid, you know. <laughs> I, dude, like, I, I don't I know. I, I, catch it. When Marshall was back there, I'm like, why Why do we have – okay. Oh, when they put Marshall back there for the Vanderbilt game one year, I wanted to <laughs> headbutt the wall. Uh, I'm glad he came anyways. back. Glad he came yes, back, by I, the way. I, I'm I glad think, he came back. Well, I think that was a good move for his part, um, especially well, seeing what went in the draft last year. Now you get a chance to come back for your senior year, you know, be on that one side. You know, from what we've known and what we've read and what we've heard, the former coach of that position wasn't really coaching them. Yeah, which is so uh, crazy. He wasn't trying to develop them because he got worse. Yeah. I mean, he went from being a – Shut down guy to being worse. I'm so used to Florida having one guy. You're not going to throw over there. Like, yeah. And we thought yeah. he was going to be that guy and take. I mean, in our worst down. years, we've had it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. even our worst of worst, we've still had that one guy. I know. So it'll be interesting for sure, man. I'm excited about it. Uh, me and Cody are going down to Gainesville tomorrow um, to go check out the facility, go hang out with the team. Um, so it'll be a fun experience, a different experience than what we experienced last year. So yeah, for sure. I'll try to get some footage and put it up on TikTok. So I hope you guys can check it out. Mm. Really appreciating you guys watch this. Please share our video, go on Instagram, follow us, subscribe on YouTube, go listen on Spotify or Apple. Um, again, comment what you think about it, uh, about the Florida Gators. Do you think they can go over? Do you think they're going to go under? And um, tell us what you think. We'd love to hear your thoughts about the Gators this year. Mm -hmm. Cody, as we get out of here, man, you got anything to close us on? Yeah, I want to say, is there a number to keep Billy, you think? Yes or no? The team, the one thing I think me and you know, the media has portrayed that, it, that he's going to get fired if he doesn't win a certain amount of games. Yeah. The university, the people – I don't think there's the people, a number there. I don't think there is. The people love him and haven't said anything to him about it. It's the media that has persuaded this because of Florida's past. Yeah. They fired each coach after three years. The last two after three, they gave Bushant four. So I think it, if you really dig if you really dig deep into Billy and, and the way he approaches things and the, the person that he is and the way he tries to 
really uplift the, the university in the best ways all around, not just, you know, not just with recruiting, um, you know, with, with the, the lawsuit, obviously that that's a, a downplay, but it's a, he said, she said type thing. I think in general, they look at Billy and say, you know, he's doing it the right way. Now, will five or six games be enough, you know, three or four years or not? Absolutely not. But I do think with this schedule, man, you, there's no good, there's no good way to come out of it, you know, cause if you win, even if you win six or seven, you know, you, you win some team. I mean, you, you beat some Look, teams that you probably aren't supposed to, but you still the teams that you're supposed to the, the, Kentucky, the, UCF, Sanford. Mm, I don't know if there's anybody else that I mean, you're absolutely supposed to, but those yeah. are the ones beat them. Do not do not lose to I any just of think it, it, it matters how it looks, man. That's all I was gonna say is I, I want Florida fans to know the ones that don't maybe they don't deep dive as, as much as us, or maybe they're you know are looking for guys like us to tell them it, it's not a number. I don't think it's six, I don't think it's five, I don't think it's seven. I think it matters how they play. You know, if, if you get your your rear end handed to you against, you know, Tennessee, Georgia, A and M. LSU, Texas, everybody, and and you you barely beat these other teams, and yeah, it's probably gonna be an issue. But if if history shows us right, Billy's not one to just get the crap beat out of him. And I, I think with him improving his roster and and he knows the pressure that's on his back, but he also knows what he's got in his hand, and he's not showing his full hand. So I just want to kind of throw that out there. Um, I hope we get to talk to Billy some tomorrow and hit on that, but. I'm a Billy fan, man, and I'm I'm hoping he can prevail through this tough schedule. I hope so too, man. I'm a huge fan of him myself. He's a great guy. Um, he's a great leader. He's a great leader of the program. Um, we can get into this another time, but God dang, if something did happen and they did decide to move on, I mean, who do you go get? You know, there's I think there's it's nobody just, out there that I like. Yeah, I just think it takes you know guys like the college football experience and, and others to really not follow the trend of, well, Billy's on the hot seat or, you know, if he does something, then, Oh, you know, push the, push the negative narrative. I think it takes guys like us to say, look, man, yeah, it's been a struggle. Yeah. Last year ain't what we wanted. The year before ain't what we wanted, but, but we're close, man. We're, we're close. close. We're close and we're building. And I, I think if you really, Listen to some of the smart people in the in the game and around the game. It's going to take time, and if you let it build, you could you could really pay off. So I'm people hoping don't realize in, but... how bad the program was at, and yeah. the schedule was is hard. I mean, you've been playing Utah to start the year. You haven't had the three non-con that Dan Mullen had, Will Muschamp had. Like yeah. if he would have those games, dude, he'd have eight wins his first year. Yeah. He'd have he would have had uh seven last year. So like we would be in these bowl games if we played yeah. and easy. You, you know, you mentioned leadership and one thing you can tell about Billy is he not he is a leader and, and things that you know I think about instantly is just the play calling. Like something as simple as play call, not simple as play calling, but something as simple as the subject of play calling. And he's like, nah, I mean I'm going down with the ship. If, if if it fails, then then we'll go with it. But I'm calling the plays, you know, and I, I think it takes somebody like that to do it his way because he knows what works. So it's just a matter yeah. of of leaning on him and, and hoping we get there. So yeah. I uh well I appreciate you joining us tonight. As you guys can see, we're very passionate about this and very passionate about this team. Uh man, we just want to see him be successful, man. That that's and it, and it's not it doesn't have to be make the playoffs. It doesn't have to be go to the SEC championship game, man. We just want to see success. And we want to see that it's going in the right direction. And the stuff that we see, it looks like it is. Now it's just show us on the field. Hmm. And we want them to be successful. We're not cheering against we're not cheering against them, man. We're cheering for them regardless. Gotcha. Uh, with that being said, man, appreciate you guys joining us, Cody. Uh, it's always a pleasure. That's I love right. having you on here. Yeah. Go Gators. Yes, See you sir. guys later, man.